Well, hey everybody, welcome to this week's Approach in the Scene. Today I want to talk about how I share my Lightroom Classic catalog between my laptop when I'm on the road and my desktop. I keep one catalog that has all of my files from the 90s to today. It's a huge catalog with like a quarter of a million images. And I keep it with me all the time. I don't have all those images with me. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about how I keep it backed up in multiple locations. But I have a, a cool system for having that Lightroom Classic catalog run really fast and be available to me when I'm on the road on my laptop, no matter where I am in the world as well as on my desktop when I get home and to be able to be right where I was, no backing up, no copying, none of that kind of stuff. But first I wanna give a big shout out to everybody in the YouTube community who's helped make this channel a success. You know, it's been growing a lot since I started 50 Approaching the Scene episodes ago. Uh, so it's been about 50 weeks now. And I just wanna give a big shout out on this 50th Approaching the Scene. Thanks to everybody. I really appreciate all the comments, all the questions, all the emails, just the input, the conversation has been fantastic. And overall, I want this to be a conversation, so I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'll get to a few questions at the end, including one that I've been getting a lot of questions about, about this new custom top uh, that's a prototype I've been using. People have been seeing it. They've been asking me scads of questions for the Manfrotto 500AH fluid head. We'll get to that at the end. Let's talk about the catalog and how I keep it with me all the time, whether I'm on the road or here in the studio, and I never have to do any backup or updating, or, or I'm right where I was when I left off on my laptop when I plug into my desktop. So I'll show you how I do that. I'm gonna close the laptop just for now. I'm here in Lightroom Classic, and you know, the first thing, you know, I, I keep my catalog on this little SSD drive. These are these Samsung T5, fast USB 3.1, they have a USB-C connector, um, and they've got a very fast transfer rate, they're relatively affordable, and they're just really high performance, very durable, very fast, and I keep my catalog on that. It's actually faster than just about any other. There's a few faster external hard drive platforms out there, but they're super expensive. OWC has a new one that's got nearly a gigabyte a second transfer rate. This I'm finding with USB 3.1 transfers at, at you know, around, it's close to 500 megabytes per second, which is really, really fast. So I'm gonna put a link to these drives. I'm gonna talk a little bit about them. Just know that when I talk about these SSDs, I'm talking about a Samsung T5. Uh, and I have a really big Lightroom catalog. Like I told you, I've got everything from the 90s to today, stored in one catalog, quarter of a million images lots of smart previews, lots of one-to-one -one previews. So I have a one terabyte version of this, and then I carry a bunch of 500 gigabyte versions just for files to store when I'm out in the field. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but the key, you know, the question that a lot of people ask me is how do I get my catalog onto one of these if I've been working in Lightroom for a while on the desktop or on the laptop, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So. Here we are in Lightroom. You're gonna to go to the Lightroom menu. Whether you're on PC, whether you're on Mac, it's really, really similar. You wanna to go to your catalog settings. And you're gonna jump in there, and under the General tab, it shows you where the location is. Right now, it's showing that it's in this, this one terabyte SSD drive that I have called Lightroom Master Terabyte TB. And so I'm gonna have it just, I'm gonna to click to show that. If you're on Windows, it'll bring up Windows Explorer. In Mac, it's gonna bring up the Mac Finder. So there I have this other Finder window open too. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you what's going on there in just a second. But essentially what this is showing me is that, you know, here I have this Lightroom Master Terabyte Drive. That's one of these Samsung SSDs. It's a one terabyte one. Uh, and in it, I have a folder. The only folder on that drive is my Lightroom Master Catalog. Now, when you all go and look, it's most likely gonna be in your Photos folder. That's where Lightroom and Adobe probably chose to store it. So it's gonna be, you know, for me, that'd be Hudson Henry here on the Mac. And then I'd go into my Pictures folder, and you'd find something that's, you know, Lightroom Catalog, and the catalog would be here. And all you would really need to do is grab that folder and then, you know, open up your SSD. You might name that SSD drive, you know, Lightroom Master Catalog. Whatever it is that's gonna remind you when you plug in that drive that that's your Lightroom Catalog, you could just drag it right into here and drop it. This is gonna take just a second because there's, you know, it's just kind of a dummy catalog where yours would be. Now, all you need to do, you've, 
it'll take it a while because it's probably got a lot more in there than, than this dummy catalog had. But you can go ahead, close down these, these windows here, shut down your catalog preferences, and then, well, one more thing I'd have you do. While you're in those catalog preferences, make sure that, that oh, I clicked on general preferences. Go in here into catalog settings, and make sure that it says to back up the catalog every time Lightroom exits. Make sure that that's reminding you to keep that catalog backed up. I'll talk about that in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and close those catalog settings, and then I wanna go ahead and close down Lightroom. And I'll, I'll have you notice that I was just working on this file from Olympic National Park. I was just in the park last week filming a course, and I, I barely looked at any images, but I had a beautiful sunset at Ruby Beach and did this, this HDR shot. So let's remember that's there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, close down Lightroom, and because it says backup catalog every time it exits, I want you to go ahead and choose a backup location that's not on that SSD drive. You know, you could put it on your local hard drive. For me, I've got this big series of Drobo drives. One backs up the other that are each, you know, I don't know, 16 terabytes. And so I, I put it in a Drobo drive in a folder called Lightroom Catalog Backups. Everything, that's gonna be backed up in multiple locations. But essentially, it, that's where I want it. I want it to back up right to there. That's, that's where, so not on that SS3 and whole new location. In case while you're on the road you lose that solid state drive, you want your catalog backed up on your desktop computer at home, in the studio, wherever that happens to be. Now I'm gonna skip this time because that would take us a bunch of time. I don't want you to sit and watch the wheels spin. You can always choose to do that. But if you've done a lot of work on your catalog, I'd highly suggest that you, you choose to back it up and you know, go make coffee while it backs up and come back. So now, what we want to do, we want to take this drive, Lightroom Master Terabyte Drive that has my catalog on it, and here, you know, we've got the actual master catalog. It's this one that's .lrcat. That's the actual catalog file. I'm going to go ahead and close this dummy one down that we just put in there. There's nothing really there. I was just showing you how you would copy one across. So I only have this one folder in here. That's, that's going to keep it running really, really fast. And I want you to just click on that and you can double click it. And what's gonna happen is that's gonna launch Lightroom from the SSD drives catalog, all right? And you'll watch when it opens, even if this has been someplace else, it's gonna come back to right where you were with everything that you've done stored. And it's gonna be on the, on the very image that you were at last. Now, you could right now, as long as this is all working great, just delete the original folder location where the, where the catalog is that you copied it from. Remember, we didn't, we didn't move it, we just copied it. You know, just for safety's sake, leave it for a little while, run it off the solid state drive for a month, make sure everything's running great, then go ahead and, and delete that backup that you, you don't need anymore. If you've moved beyond it, you're gonna be backing up to another location every time you quit, and that backup file is gonna be much, much smaller. It's not gonna include all those preview files, all those smart previews, the, a huge amount of data. It's gonna back up in one one hundredth of the space that the actual catalog takes. So it's not gonna take that much room on your local hard drive. Okay, so here we got it. It's set up, it's here. It sees that there are a bunch of different drives that have had photos on them. They're grayed out. You'll notice that, that's one thing that Lightroom does. It, it's gonna show you images that you know might have been in a folder. You know, if, Let's say, for example, You've got this home and family drive, or you know, Palouse. There, there were actually no photos in that one. But if I go to the Palouse drive, we've got all of these JPEGs. I'm filtered right now, I think, to only seeing two-starred images. But this is from this workshop in the Palouse, some, some favorite images from that. Those photos, that drive is not connected to this computer at the moment. But you can still see the previews because they're in the catalog. And that's an important thing we're going to talk about in a minute when we're out, when I go to the road. Because we're not going to have the Drobo connected to my laptop. We're not going to have that big library that has all 250,000 images. We're going to be working with external drives on my laptop. But we'll still be able to see all the images in my big master library. So I'm going to go ahead one more time. I'm going to shut down. Uh, Lightroom. I'm going to go ahead and skip the backup again, even though I, I'm urging you not to do that. 
And the next time you just launch Lightroom, it's going to launch automatically from the last location that the catalog was at. So you're not going to have to go and open that folder and launch every single time you do this. Um, now what I want you to do, whether you're in Windows, whether you're in Mac, safely eject that hard drive. So we're going to eject the Lightroom Master. Okay, boop. And that lets me disconnect this drive from my desktop. Boom, I've got it in my hand. I've got a couple of USB-C cords here. I've got a drive that has some photos on it to work with on my laptop that are from you know a shoot that aren't on my Drobo yet. And I'm just gonna set this stuff aside and show you how I work with this catalog on my laptop. So I'm gonna put my laptop right here and we'll plug in a couple of these USB-C fast 3.1 USB-C connectors, plug in the catalog drive, plug in the data drive that has some photos on it, and we'll fire this laptop up. And then what I want to do is I want to go into my Lightroom Master Terabyte catalog. That's the same drive that was just connected to the big computer and wait a second, I'll start some, uh, some screen casting software here. So I wanna open up this hard drive that I just unplugged from my desktop that has the catalog on it. I'm gonna double click it, open it up. There's that same file, lr5master-2.lrcat, that's our catalog file. You can see it's 3.45 gigabytes. Most of the data in this is in previews and smart previews. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. That's gonna launch that catalog in the laptop's version of Lightroom Classic. And boom. So the last place we were looking was this file from the Palouse. If I go into the grid view, you can see that's exactly the folder we were just working in. If I go into Let's see if it'll remember recent locations. It does, Olympic National Park. Boom, there's some of the images we were just working on, including that, uh, including that HDR photo that I had just done on the desktop I've never ever created on the laptop. Everything is here, and you can see the Drobo drive is grayed out. I don't actually have this photo. There's a little exclamation point there to show me that that photo is missing. What I do have connected is this one SSD drive. It's a 500 gigabyte drive. I, I have a number of these. I think maybe I have five of them that are not my Lightroom catalog. And this is number five. I actually take a paint pen and paint a big number on the outside of these Samsung SSD drives to know which one's which when I'm plugging them in. So I've got number five here. And if I take a look, it's got some images that I've actually shot to be cover images for these videos for approaching the scene at different times. Uh, including one that I'm toying with using for this particular video. So those photos are here on this drive and I could actually work with them. Uh, any photos that I choose to take along with me from my, from my other drives, you know, I have a collection of images in here called sort of my, my best originals. It's just a lot of my favorite images. All of those I have built smart previews for. You can just do that by selecting an image and going into the library folder and under previews, you say build smart previews. If it does that, it, it builds sort of a little mini raw file. It's not the same size as the master. It's only a fraction of the size. Uh, it, it's a miniature raw file that lets you go through and do editing maneuvers on that photo. You can export a small JPEG from it to use and send off to a client or something if you're on the road. And then when you get home, it'll sync any changes that you did in the smart preview to the master file when you connect back in and that drive's back connected. Pretty cool stuff. So that's, that's a little secret for working with files that you really might need access to on the road. So if you think out ahead and build smart previews for files you might want to work with, you can kind of carry a library light all built into your catalog. It's another good reason to have a big SSD for that catalog. That's why I use a one terabyte drive. So I've got everything with me here on the road. That catalog works great. You know, let, let's leave it on an image. Uh, let's say this image of my wife Stacy in Cozumel back when we were dating before we had kids. And I'll go ahead, close down the Lightroom catalog. Yes, I really want to quit. 
It's gonna ask me if I wanna back up. Now again, choose a local location on your laptop's hard drive and back up that catalog to your laptop too. That way, you know, if you're on the road and you lose your hard drive and the studio burns down while you're away or there's an earthquake or there's a flood and you lose your desktop computer, this thing's still backed up on your, on your, on your laptop. You have it backed up on your desktop computer at home, you have it backed up on your laptop in your bag, and you have it in that SSD that you actually run the Lightroom software off of. So <clears throat> it works really, really well. Again, I'm gonna skip it this time just to save time. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna eject that master drive. And here's a really neat thing. So when I import photos when I'm out on the road, I import them into these 500 gigabyte SSDs. At the same time when I'm importing, I have Lightroom build a backup copy. I have it copy to a second location. I just use a cheap, old, slow spinning 5200 RPM platter drive. You can get, this is a two terabyte one. I got it Costco on sale for like 79 bucks. Everything that I download onto these SSD drives to work with while I'm in the field, I have backed up on this. So I might fill up a couple of these, but I'm still using just this one two terabyte cheap drive to back everything up. And I keep this in my camera bag. If my laptop bag gets stolen and my camera bag doesn't, I still have all the photos that I've taken on the trip. That's just a little piece of advice. Once you get it back home and you move it onto your desktop system and it's into your backup regime, whether you got cloud backup, local backup, both like I have, then you can just erase this and use it on the next trip. All right, that's a, a, just a little pro level tip there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eject both of these drives and let's disconnect them and plug them back in to my desktop system. And I should light up here on the desktop. Go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll shut this down and pull these cords. And what I'm gonna do, there they both are, I can launch Lightroom again now. And let's say that I had been out on the road and I created those photos in the Samsung portable drive for approaching the scene. So these, these photos are all on this, um, on this external drive, they're not in my Drobo. They're in the mobile library that I carry with me, but I want to move them onto the desktop drive. Now that I'm home, now that I'm back to the studio, I'd like to get them into my bigger master library. So I've got these two drives here. I got my Drobo and I've got my Samsung T5 number five. And I'm just going to open up the folder with all of my 2019 images as of yet in here. And I want to go ahead and grab that folder. And I also want to go down here and turn off all my filters so that I'm seeing all of my images. I'll select them all. And I just want to go ahead and grab those, that whole folder of images, the ATS images, drag it up here into 2019. I'm here in the folders view in the library, left panel of Lightroom Classic. I'm going to go ahead and drop them into that Drobo folder and you'll see here they start disappearing from this T55 folder. And now we have a 2019 ATS images and they're loading into it. And then I have this set up so that all of my images and video are on this one big Drobo. That's a, a series of rated hard drives. There's lots of different arrays. You could have just a big external hard drive. Then I have a second Drobo. That could be a second big external hard drive if you have fewer files that backs up the other Drobo. And then I use a, a cloud backup storage system with unlimited storage called Backblaze that I think is really affordable and I've had really great luck with because I have a fast internet connection. It takes a really long time to upload if you have a slow throttled internet connection, uh, but with, with a good uh, solid internet connection, it's, it's working quite well. Oh wait, and let's just jump in. I must have the wrong folder open right now. Let's go into my Drobo and ATS images. Boom, there we are back to that. If I filter back to two Im star images, boom, there we go. So easy way 
to use external SSDs to not only improve your performance, I find that my performance in Lightroom has been greatly accelerated by moving the catalog off of a hard drive that has either software on it or data on it onto its own individual fast SSD. You know, and your mileage is going to vary a little bit if you have slower connections into your computer, but if you have a modern computer with at least USB 3 connections, better yet, USB 3.1, you're going to find that it's blazing fast. It's almost as fast as the internal hard drive, but it has no, uh, no competition for getting data. It's not reading software data. It's not reading your photo data. It's just reading catalog data. So I like to keep my photos on one drive, my, my catalog on another drive, my operating system on another drive. Uh, and you can just move back and forth between the laptop and the desktop seamlessly with one catalog. You know, you're never trying to, to, to back up the catalog or update a catalog or combine catalogs. I mean, that's, that's all kind of scary stuff. I just work with that one. I keep it backed up on both platforms. Okay, so enough of that. You guys have questions, hit me up. You know, hit me up in the comments. You can always uh, send me an email. I'm easy to find. I'm gonna talk for just a second. I've had a ton of questions from people that have adopted my system of using the Manfrotto 500AH lightweight, affordable fluid head that I just think is vastly superior to, to the greatest ball head known to man. I just, there's no way I could go back. Um, and people have been noticing I have this system that works to really easily secure the camera and do panoramas or connect a long lens in using a nodal slider in this new top. And I've been getting a lot of questions. I had a black one on here, now I have a silver one on here. Where do I get this? Well, it's a Kirk prototype and I've actually been uh, chatting with the folks at Kirk and had a little input. This one is, is the latest prototype. I think it's just about perfect. Uh, they're going into production on it. They shot me this one without even anodizing it. It's probably the only silver one that'll ever be. They'll make them in their anodized black like all their other products. Um, I love it. I'm not ready to tell you about it because it's not quite available, but look for a future video and I'll tell you a whole bunch more about that. I've also had a lot of questions. You know, I talked about moving from this Mac Pro system to a desktop PC and still using the, the MacBook laptop. And I've been having really, really fun time working with a super fast PC and I'm about ready to flirt with replacing the Mac Pro and selling the old trash can Mac Pro because this thing's really moving fast. A couple challenges may be sharing that Lightroom catalog and figuring out some last little things, uh, but I'm 90% of the way there and I've been really, really happy. So more about that in coming days, along with a review of the Nikon Z 14 to 30 f4 lens, which I've really been enjoying using and I haven't been carrying my 14 to 24 very much lately. Um, I know it's been a little bit of controversy around that lens. I'm finding that for the things I do, it's razor sharp, it's light, it takes filters, it's got, renders beautiful images. So I'll talk more about that when I get a complete review ready. I still wanna test a couple things. All right, hey, thanks everybody. Thanks for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. This first 50 approaching the scenes have been a lot of fun and I can't wait for the next 50.